let us talk about um, certain, uh, you know, the Scala collections, right? So collections, so Scala has uh, support for a very rich set of collection type uh, variables. So uh, in Scala, you have very good set of uh, collections. So you have things like uh, arrays, okay, arrays, array buffers, uh, maps, tuples, and lists. Okay, so there are many different types of collection collection data types. So let's look at um, them. So uh, let's look at, for example, arrays. An array is basically a collection type with fixed number of uh, 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 you know values in its collection, right? So which can be uh, which is basically indexed, right? So let's look at um, uh, you know how you create uh, fixed length arrays, right? So uh, here I'll say um, val n is equal to, now uh, I'll say new, okay, so basically instantiate, uh, you know, um, uh, an object of a particular class type, right? So I'll use the keyword new to say, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, create an object of an array type okay uh, and then assign it to this variable called n okay so i'll say an array of create a new uh, let's say array of uh, integers so it should be a collection of some data type right so it's an array of integers and uh, uh, which is having a fixed length of uh, you know 10 values So it's giving me a, sorry, excuse me. Oh. You always define it with the square brackets, I'm sorry, right? Right? So similarly, I can create an array of, uh, like, say, strings. Okay, observe what happens. So basically now you have an array of um, strings which are all initialized to uh, null values, okay? Or um, you could kind of create an array where you can say, uh, instead of uh, uh, doing it this way, you could say uh, an array of, and you can assign some values here. So I'll say, hello world. I'm sorry. When you are instantiating uh, an array with with some values, you don't need a new, right? So you can just say, uh, you know, create an array of these, right? So obviously, you can see here now you have an uh, array of strings. So this is um, having the values that you have assigned here. Now, uh, to understand all the different methods that is available for each of this. So this is where the power of Scala comes. Now, if you look at n dot, and if you uh, hit tab, you can see that you know there's many different uh, types of uh, functions that is available, right? So if I go and uh, create something like this, and see. So these are the methods that are, um, uh, you know, available. So you can you can use this apply to basically apply some functions. You can use this as instance of to reference this by typecasting, uh, you know, each of the values. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, length gives you the length of the array and so on, right? So you can call all of this. Now, uh, see the... Arrays are of fixed lengths, right? So if you want to create, um, you know, a variable length array, in Scala, you have um, another collection type called as array buffers, okay? So um, 
array buffers you can create it so for this you need to import a package okay um, scala dot collection dot mutable dot array buffer okay so basically import this package and within this you have array buffers right so you can just use it the same way we created a array so I'll say val a equal to uh, an array buffer of okay uh, integers okay and I say it's a it's of variable length okay so now you can see here um, you basically created a uh, an array buffer of integers and this is of variable length okay now for these if you look at this uh, uh, you know a dot and if I hit a tab now can you see here the number of uh, methods that is available for this right so there's a whole host of operations that you can perform on this right which makes it uh, very powerful say for example um, now I have created an array A is basically an array array buffer okay so I want to add some values into this so I can use the um, you know plus equal to operator so I'll say A plus equal to equal to 1 observe now you have an array buffer with one value in it called as 1 right so you want to add more uh, into this more values into this so I'll say a plus equal to 2 comma 3 comma 4 okay so now can you see here these um, these values are added into this array buffer right so this plus equal to operator is incrementally it adds it right now uh, there is another uh, you know the, there's a plus plus operator if you observe here in this a dot so you get this plus plus operator also it's supported so using this plus plus operator so this is the reason we didn't use plus plus uh, in our for loops and all because plus plus is a um, is an you know different operator here so using this plus plus operator you can add an array into this array buffer okay so for example into the same array buffer so I'm going to use a plus plus the plus plus operator and I'll say uh, equal to uh, I'll say array of okay uh, I'll say 5 comma 6 comma 7 okay so so I think I made it as um, it is a mutable right oh so I made it as uh, uh, well okay no problems I'll make it as var a equal to 1 So instead of var, I'll make it as var. Okay. So see if it is var, you cannot add that. So now uh, I'll say a plus equal to one, and then I will add some numbers here. And now I will use the plus plus operator to add the. Oh, okay. So it is a plus plus equal to. Okay. So you can see here now uh, this array is added into uh, you know this array buffer. Now let us use some more uh, functions of this. So I'll say a dot and tab. So you see, so there are so many functions. Now, uh, say for example, 
uh, I'll use trim end, right? So trim end function basically removes the last, you know, whatever the arguments you're passing. So if I say trim end of two, okay, so it's going to trim the last two elements of, uh, you know, array. So if I say A now, you can see here that six and seven is gone. So trim end basically uh, removes the last two elements, right? Um, now you can use the insert. So I say a dot insert. Okay. So a dot insert. Insert will add uh, an element at uh, whatever the index you are uh, want to fit it fit that in. So supposing if I say add it at the second element, uh, the value of nine. Okay. So now observe. So now if I say A, can you observe that um, the second, so the index is always starts from zero. So when I say two, it will be zero, one, and then the second, right? So on the third, so that is basically the, at the index of two, it has added the value of nine. Right? So you can also Say for example the same thing. Uh, I can add, like say, at the at the second, uh, at at the you know at the index of two, maybe I add some uh, some arrays here. Right? So I'll say add ten comma eleven comma twelve. Right. So now if I say a, observe what happens. So at the second index, that is uh, at at uh, after two, so it's giving uh, you know, it's added the array that I gave, right? 10, 11, and 12. Is that clear? So I can similarly use the remove function. So uh, remove, remove method. So remove basically removes an element. So I'll say remove element uh, at 2. So you can see here now uh, the element at the index 2 is basically 10, right? So that is uh, that it fetched. So if you if you notice here, now um, you know the 10 is gone. So it has removed that 10 from the array buffer. Okay. So you can also specify the number of multiple number of elements to be removed um, by just adding one more variable here. I mean, sorry, one more parameter. So if I say remove 2 comma 3. So from the index of two, it removes the next three values, right? So now if you see, notice A, so those uh, from the index two, that is 11, 12, 1, 9 are gone. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 